here's Victor from, from Confluent. Take it over, yeah. Victor. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for staying for the second, uh, the second part of our show. Uh, and uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, um, commit logs. Uh, how awesome is that? Like how, how often you hear about commit logs? <laughs> Probably like every day, every other day. Um, how excited you are about the commit logs? I'm excited. Ooh. Yeah, I'm, I love it. Um, yeah, my name is Victor. Um, I work as a developer advocate uh, at the Confluent. And uh, the Confluent is a company that's founded by founders of Apache Kafka. Uh, as a developer advocate, people ask me, like, what do you do? I'm talking to developers, I'm going to places, and I'm trying to absorb all the pain, all the suffering that the people experience through the learning uh, new awesome things, or maybe learning some, or like changing habits and stuff like that. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. Uh, how many of you guys have a Twitter here? Because you're going to need this. Um, so first of all, say it again. It probably can be, but uh, <laughs> it's just a Photoshop here. Um, so the, um, the, the, the demo for this one, and I will post the slide somewhere, uh, it's gonna be here. It's like full-blown training materials for microservices that, that we develop at Confluent. So probably one of the important slides on this one. The second important slide is this one. So this is why I said you need to have a Twitter if you wanna participate in Ruffle. Uh, and in this case, you need to follow me and follow Confluent. Uh, take a pictures of me doing a presentation about the event-driven platforms. Uh, post in, uh, on Twitter, just uh, tag me there. And uh, let's make this tag is training, right? Seattle event-driven. I think it's a pretty good hashtag to, to make, um, to make um, training. So I'm going to be talking today about um, probably three things. I will, I'll try to structure by three things. Same way as uh, Matt did. Um, I'm going to start with some introduction about the normal application um, and uh, what we have right now. Many, maybe many of us have this. How we can use this and how we can transition from the event driven. And in between, I'm going to talk about how the Kafka and what role Kafka can play in this transition. All right? So if you, at the particular moment of time, want to participate in my raffle, my uh, hashtag and my Twitter account is conveniently located uh, over here on every slide. So don't hesitate. Thank you so much. All right. So the monoliths, it's the um, applications that we difficult to talk about, right? So we uh, spend some time to building these architectures over, over time. But it's not difficult to talk about this, not because it's kind of like uh, when the you know, we've been afraid, we've been shamed for the, some design decision that we made. It's simply big. It cannot fit in the brain of one person, right? It's, it's just complex. So this is why the different organizations start to develop different patterns to break it down. Uh, so in order to make these design decisions fit in the brain of one person. So it doesn't, like, some of the complex architectures will not fit in my brain, I'm pretty sure. And also, because of that, you probably maybe have some people who knows everything about the system, so it's called perfect uh, job security, I guess. Um, so this is why it's like hard to change because there's so many moving parts and many things are interconnected. So, and don't get me wrong, I love microservices. Oh, microservices! I love microservices, but monoliths I love even more. I built those uh, in my life when I was a consultant back in the day, um, and it's not that, it's it's easy. <laughs> It's easy to build. Uh, we have like just use uh, like a local calls to uh, different functions inside my uh, monolith system. But um, since we start like embracing a new brave world of like a moving fast and trying not to break things along the way, uh, we need to decompose this, right? So we bring in things into small pieces. Small pieces that we can, you know, one person can digest, or like a, a pizza, pizza box size type of uh, type of approach, where we can have um, smaller chunks that one person can bite. Right? Now we need to, we we broke it down. We have this broken down system. Now we need to reintegrate it back. So we need to establish this connection. With monolith world, it was easy. We can do local calls, and essentially it just happens on the. You know, you throw some of the uh, things 
you call another procedure is basically go to programming, right? So just call another procedure where the response, everything happens instantaneously. Now, when we have this uh, microservice approach, we need to now do integration or cross uh, cross network or cross process calls, right? And this kind of things getting things harder than uh, than monoliths because there are no good ways to integrate microservices. Oh, let's put this way: there are no good ways to integrate microservices. So um, there's a couple couple approaches that you can start. First of all, uh, we can use one of them probably one of the oldest um, integration patterns, how we can integrate your microservices through file system. Like one service write to file, another reads from file, right? So it's awesome. It's 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 amazing thing. I don't know if uh, how many of you are actually doing this. Um, but uh, the next one is pretty close to this one, right? Uh, I was wondering like, how many of you will get the reference um, to um, why I have this picture. Anyone? Yeah, this is a bucket of ACID uh, database, right? Okay. All right, so database is amazing, right? So we can use database to integrate our microservices. Um, we have databases. We use micros, uh, the, the databases to integrate like everything. It's easy. We know how to use it. Uh, but eventually, our services um, needs to coexist, commingle. And um, so in this case, like if you in the, uh, the, the domain-driven design thing, you start violating this uh, the context principle uh, because some of the some of the ideas from one context can uh, leak into another context. So you kind of having this like abstraction that comes from one domain into another, which is uh, probably not a good idea. And uh, it's good to use in your microservice. A microservice still needs persistency. Uh, somehow you need to store your data somehow so it's good to use it within context of one service but maybe not so good for uh, sharing data or even like uh, negotiating some changes so what else any idea what else we heard this a uh, few times uh, from mad talks we have uh, remote procedure calls some restful services or even better uh, some uh, grpc thing Right? Um, it's a good idea. It's also kind of sort of natural because when we program our uh, monoliths, we were calling other procedures. And having this like remote code, it kind of all makes sense, right? When we, um, when we develop this, uh, the way of integrating things, you, uh, you, you're playing around this uh, request response paradigm. So you send the request, you get a response. Um, the transport can be different. You can use HTTP, you can use TCP, HTTP 2.0, something else. But what about if your service depends on another service and that service depends on another service? Things go south if one service will go down. Of course, there are patterns how we can like things this. We can do uh, like a circuit breakers type of things. We can uh, uh, learn how to build resilient services. But um, Another question arises, like how you would debug this kind of situation? Where, how you find the things uh, that, that broken? Any ideas? How we can debug cascading failures in distributed systems? Distributed tracing? Anything else? You have a log. You have the log file where you're putting everything that happens. So the first thing that you can do, you're not going to your distributed uh, tracing system. You, okay, so let's see the logs. Let's look what's happening in the log. So, which makes me think, uh, in this case, your log is essentially a place where you're going to learn the truth about the system or wh who's the killer, right? Um, and I think the, the third approach is to have events because in the log, that the log that you're putting this uh, SLF4J, anyone? Log4J, Log4J2, anyone? Do you have any uh, Java developers? How, how many uh, uh, .NET developers? Uh, uh, Log4.NET, I guess? <laughs> I used to be a, pro a .NET programmer, so I don't know. 
So events, events. Uh, because essentially every line of your log is something that happened in your system. Um, some of the procedure was called, some database was called, so you actually put in these events in your log. So what about integrating through events since you're already using this one? Um, so and it's kind of interesting question, what is event? What is event and what it does and uh, how we can use it? So uh, I think it's going to be another very important slide um, that you can use. Um, and this is a very interesting um, description, right? It's a shared narrative describing evolution of business over the time. Or throw away business and keep evolution over time. So, for example, every year you celebrating your, your birthday and it actually, you know, something that has happened. You know, your birthday has happened and you have a different, uh, different stuff that happened during this event. Things that happened in the past. You cannot change this. Like those words you said to your significant other, you cannot take them back. You can send another message, another event with apology, but in this, it, it would be, it depends on how fast this message will be, you know, consumed, produced, and the new state of your significant other will be uh, materialized. So essentially, <laughs> event is a shared, um, it's a description of some of the fact that happened uh, before. So uh, if you follow my idea with the, you know, the saying words and after that, how this word would be, um, uh, basically how, how the, the person will react on these things, you essentially have a history and state. And events allow you to have a um, combination of notification, right? So you can say, Okay, so I'm sorry, things like that. But uh, also you can uh, change some sort of uh, state. You can actually send some information. So you can say, I'm sorry, it's notification. Or you can say, okay, so I'm leaving and there's like, I will be in that hotel. Um, I'll stay for that in the hotel for, I don't know, until we figure this out. So it's actually have some state, it has some additional information, right? Now, uh, and since I already mentioned this, um, events are immutable. You cannot change the fact that things are happening. So you cannot change the fact that your birthday happened, uh, your words, you cannot change those, and things like that, right? So this is like a fundamental, uh, the bricks or fundamental uh, foundation of, of this conversation. Um, and uh, since I already mentioned in the very beginning that I, I work with uh, Confluent and we're building things on top of Apache uh, Kafka streaming platform, event streaming platform, and so the first part is kind of introduction to idea of events and how we will use an event to integrate our microservices. Now, I would love to give a um, brief overview of Kafka because Kafka is a represent of distributed transactional log and there are many uh, other distributed transaction logs these days. It's kind of popular concept and it's quite, um, quite straightforward to implement. And I, when I will explain how it works internally, you will understand what I'm talking about, why it's easy to implement. All right, event streaming platform. Uh, in three words, in three uh, basic description, how it's different from things that you know exist today. So first of all, it has a storage. So uh, some, some, uh, some, some of you might heard that Kafka is a system that has messaging capabilities and also has database like um, persistent security. So storage. Since we're talking about message, it has a patterns with the pops up. You can subscribe to certain events, you can publish certain events. Plus, streaming platform also require have uh, capabilities to process this message as they arrive. So we don't need to accumulate to process this message, we can process this message as they arrive. And this is also would be very fundamental bits of our microservices integration. Now, uh, another piece of trivia here, don't forget about tweeting this, but do not tweet actual answer because other people will be also interesting to, to win something. So we have a core abstractions. And uh, for database, it's a table. For Hadoop, it's file because it's based on the file system, distributed file system. What's the core abstraction for, uh, for Kafka? Topic closer, but not precisely. Which one? 
Precisely. Yes. So log, because we're talking about commit logs, obviously. Um, the log is the fundamental abstraction. What is log? You already know this because every time you're using the tools like log4j, SLF4j, and other things, you're doing logs, right? You're writing some events on the end of the file. Something goes into a file or, or a console or whatnot. So this is what log is. So log is probably second most popular data structure that data engineer needs to know. Who knows what's the first one? Anyone? Have you ever, um, have you ever been asked, like when you enter the country, probably not many of you, but still, like uh, in, when you meet uh, your um, um, CBP officer and he's asked uh, you what's your occupation, and your programmer, and he's asked you like what's the B tree? Can you explain how you go through the B tree in this case? Because you pro you, you claim to be programmer, right? <laughs> so the B tree is the second one important because first of all it's important for data engineering because your databases use this to build indexes, as well as log. That database use log to build structure. We'll talk about this uh, in a couple more slides. So essentially two data structures that you need to know. Plus we're in Google. We're supposed to be talking about some cool algorithms, right? Okay, so log, uh, we have uh, old data that goes in the beginning of the file, new data goes in the end. Constantly updating, nothing is disappearing, messages are still there. So, technically you can have infinite, uh, infinite storage. You, can, you don't need, not necessarily to remove anything. Um, you can from perspective of economy or like uh, free up some of the stuff. But essentially, this is how it's done. How you can read from this? You're also reading in sequential order and you're not uh, throwing away messages when you read this. So we have uh, three different applications that read the same data. They operate on the same log, and when they read this, they only commit their position. So it's called uh, offset. So when it's done reading, for example, Victor is, is not, he's not reading, he's just going through the thing, because probably he's counting. He doesn't do any sophisticated algorithms. He doesn't do anything special. Um, some other um, applications like Robin or Ricardo here, they do more, maybe more sophisticated things. They may be uh, enriching the stream or do some, some other like a, a machine learning uh, type of models, things like that. So they read the same data, they move with, it with different speed and the message will not disappear after they read this. And this is like a fundamental bits of, of Kafka. Um, sequential read, uh, you can ask me, Victor, can we do uh, key lookups? And I tell you, no, we cannot because it's not efficient. Kafka is fast for sequential reads and writes. Kafka and any other log-based data structure. In order for you to get this like uh, random access to keys, some of the stuff, you need to use something else. Kafka is not suitable to do that. Now, uh, to put this in perspective, to put this in the bigger picture, we have a producers and consumers that write this into Kafka, Topics, that uh, topic is basically a combination of these multiple distributed logs. This is where we put this up. It's called partitions. And on the other side, you have consumers that read this data. Consumers can be group and consumer group in order to have um, read scalability. Now, and uh, the Kafka is designed to be a very heavy read system. Right? So it, it, it was designed to be, you know, who knows who's the Franz Kafka? He's right. He's writing pretty creepy stuff. Um, I was trying to like come up with some of the you know jokes here, but you know there's no jokes in his books. Um, essentially, the Kafka follows the same pattern. There is a writer producer that produces some information in multiple readers. Like I've seen at least like a few hands who know who Kafka is. I hope you read one of the books. Uh, if you're not, you're not losing. It's, it's interesting at some point if you're you know, in, a, in a depression and you can feel that, oh, I'm actually not that bad because I'm not turned into like insect or something like that. <laughs> so my life is perfect now. Um, and the same idea with the Kafka system, right? There's someone who produces a lot of data and you can read on your own speed. You know, I'm a slow reader because the English is my second language. Um, there's some people who've written uh, fast because I need to go look up other words and meaning of this word. So that's why like, I'm kind of um, enriching stream of events by going and uh, pulling this information from, from different lookup uh, places. So 
essentially the same pattern is the, the something that you need to remember from here is that Kafka was kind of designed for uh, read for read approach. Now, uh, so Kafka ecosystem is actually quite quite rich. So, and uh, there's some use cases where you actually instead of like writing um, some of the, the business requirements, some of the features for your application, some delivering, some value to, to your customers, blah, blah, blah. You want to write framework sometimes. And uh, the, what is the framework? Framework is something that you know, needs to uh, automate some of the things that you do often. For example, you need to go to database all the time because you're reading something from database, or you're reading something from file, or you're reading something from another system, or you're saving something to database, or you're saving something to enterprise system or you're saying something to file. So it's cool to write frameworks because, you know, you kind of feel yourself, you're creating something that you're proud of, right? So you, you, you kind of design your own uh, features, what the framework should be doing, things like that. Um, especially like if you, okay, have a database A, Oracle, MySQL, Postgres. So you can, you, your framework can support different systems uh, to read this data from or, or write this data for. So essentially, I um, have a good news for you, or maybe bad news for you. So the Connect, Kafka Connect, is the, that kind of framework that you don't need to write because we already you know, wrote this stuff for it. And essentially, uh, for these use cases where you need to read and write to databases, you can use just a connector. It's the component model, and the Connect provides you with um, provides you with uh, like scalability, availability, restartability, and all this nice stuff. So essentially, um, there's a, a connect, uh, connect app store where I can go and find all possible connector. Like if it, I have internet here, I can probably show you how we can do that. I think I need to do this with the mirroring displays to do, yeah. So essentially, the, if you want to say, okay, I want to uh, write data to Kafka from Oracle, you're going somewhere like, okay, so this is the, um, the app store for, for your connectors and uh, you can find the connector that allows you to read something from, from Kafka or write something from Kafka. So we go in here. Um, you do Oracle, um, and uh, magically it goes into space, uh, doing something there, goes to the website, and waiting, 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 and we should get the result very soon. So space and time does not collaborate. Damn it. Yes. So, for example, or, yeah, it works. Um, Every time, uh, everything is get better when you're accepting cookies. <laughs> this is uh, something my son knows. That, um, so yeah, so there's like JWC connector that allows you to connect to any possible store and write data into Kafka without actually, you know, you writing this data um, into, the, into the Kafka. So once again, uh, the components here, we have a storage, we have a connectors that bring data in and out, and now we have a some of the ways how we can process this data. So um, the, the easiest way to talk about the processing is SQL because data engineers and people involved with data somehow they tend to use or tend to know SQL, right? Um, but for streaming system, we need to have a different type of uh, streaming SQL. So for example, this is example of the, sorry, for example, this is example. There's uh, the code snippet of thing called the KSQL, which is a streaming uh, SQL engine for Apache Kafka that allows you, this is full-blown stream processing application that's written in SQL. How cool is that? So in this case, like, you don't need to know Java if you don't know Java. Um, so it, what it does, it allows you to get some of the streams with count that can be, so in this, in this particular case, we're trying to detect uh, some of the very sophisticated algorithm of detection of um, the fraudulent authorization attempt on your credit cards. Because if your credit card was swiped more than three times uh, within five minutes, um, probably this is why my card was always 
you know, the block because of the disauthorization attempts. Like if my wife goes somewhere, just continue to swipe and okay, more than three times in five minutes. Okay. Or if you in the Java world, I have a some transformation. It's actually full blown application. It doesn't have a public static void main here, but it is actual application that does transformation. So here's a, some of the uh, Kafka with amorphosis um, uh, reference to you, like if you know what I mean. So we have our caterpillars. We apply some cool transformation, and we get butterflies on, on the on the other side. So we're getting stream of caterpillars. We do transformation, and we get the butterflies on the other side. Now, uh, okay, Victor, what about microservices? We we're talking about some other stuff. Uh, what's 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 up with microservices? So, um, in this uh, link that I shared you in the very beginning, we have full blown this system, enterprise system that has a uh, different components, different services that um, that implemented on top of uh, like Kafka framework that I will be. Um, kind of slowly refactoring during the last, uh, last act of this talk. So we have a order service, return service, payment service, fulfillment service, stock service. Um, after today, you probably can also like amend this demo with some of the knowledge that Matt provided. So um, in this case, like you can also add your own things. So essentially, user goes to web UI, plays the order, information about the order, uh, will be sent to um, fulfillment service. Um, also, customer can uh, return some of the some of the items. So the, some message will be sent from return um, return service to customer service uh, uh, to to order service. Uh, there's like a lot of interesting things going on. But essentially, when you're trying to explain to your colleague what is going on here, how many of you have? Uh, it's always sunny Philadelphia fans here. Yay! I found my people. All right, so essentially this is what happened. You have, uh, with the added complexity here, you introduce a new service that will use the same data. You're getting, you know, look like Carol. Um, so, but essentially there's some of the intersec uh, intersection of the, of, the, um, of the data that multiple services need. Um, and there's some of, the, some of the data that will require for, as you, as you can see, there's the colors of the data that you know, comes into play into, into the system. And uh, there's um, some data from the catalog service, uh, from information about customers, also required for order service, and so far and so on. So when you're trying to uh, evolve the system, you're trying to introduce some of new, uh, new components to the system, um, you need to take into account multiple things, like how you would break the contract between other, uh, because if you're introducing some of the new change, like how it will affect other, um, other systems will be like a cascading uh, changes. You need to coordinate these things. So this is why like monolithic things are difficult. You need to have a lot of things in your in mind. Even though it's, it looks like a Microsoft, you have a lot of services, right? So they micro services or micro services, they doing their own thing, but they interconnect it. And the connection through this like RPC or API call um, makes the things are complex. So we kind of sort of introduced microservices, but we didn't, uh, we didn't make things better. So uh, I propose, obviously, since I kind of in the, in the Kafka world, I propose that um, Kafka can be used as a, as a backbone for, for events exchange. You can say, yeah, that's, there's two types of events can be here, notification that only will set something that happened, and if you're interested in this event, you need to react. Or it's an actual event that has some data. It's a replication. So as you can see, I have uh, two rabbits. They replicated. <laughs> oh, yeah. So here's it. So two types of events. Um, in, the, in this case, when we say like we're, we're replicating some of the data, you can say Victor, but it's like we're breaking uh, like a normal form of our database. We're introducing some of the uh, some of the like redundant information. And yeah, that's okay. That's fine. That's that's totally totally fine. Because based on the some of the you know the data, different system can make uh, different sense of it. But like in this case, will we lose the consistency of the data? How we would know that? Um, the, you know, the copy of this data will make sense over the time, so far and so on. Now, so let's, uh, for the last couple minutes, let's uh, break it down, the service that we started. 
uh, with, um, with introduction of Kafka here. So first of all, this is uh, like a traditional RPC call, one service calls another. Um, so we have a, the user goes to service submit order. We, um, we call shipping service and the information, so, so to, to, to fulfill this, we need to have information about customer, so shipping service, we'll call it. And as you can see, every, uh, every service they have its own like local store. So we still have some of, some of, the, some of the data. So we're not sharing the store per se, right? So we're not, we're not uh, sharing uh, one large database. It's good because our microservices, they isolate it from each other. So um, shipping items, looking up some items from the customer service, but there's no Kafka here. So how we can uh, bring Kafka into play? So um, in this case, we can uh, introduce some of the notification events where uh, the, uh, one of the microservices, for example, in this case, like order service, will send event about, okay, so there's new order, and after that, I, I'm done. Because my only responsibility here is just like handling orders from the website, and after that, I will notify whoever uh, responsible for handling this one, all right? Now, a little bit of Kafka, a little bit of uh, RPC calls between services still, how we can do this. Now, in this situation, we can also introduce a different type of event that uh, can serve uh, the purpose of decoupling the shipping service from the customer service. So now, shipping service will have its own uh, small database that will have uh, information about customer updated. And this service uh, will have a listener from the, from the Kafka pipe, pipeline when the customer was updated. So in this case, information from the customer service who is originator or like a main holder of this information will send a replication event that um, data about the customer was updated. So in this case shipping service will materialize it in the form that it will be you know consumable for shipping service. And so far and so on. And after that in this case the first step was there is just to couple one of the service was sent um, this order service uh, event that order was placed and after that order service is done because we can also introduce new new types of um, new types of uh, use cases after that because we can also have an email service that will send email to customer that we um, we send this uh, that went to our website and did some order um, email service always uh, also will need uh, information about customer so it will also uh, will require some of the data from, from customer service and so far and so on. Now, so let's go a little bit deeper into, um, into the, uh, the, the streaming platform. That's Kafka is only foundation. Ka Kafka is, is only uh, the, the, the first step for, for introducing event streaming platform. Uh, uh, what's the what's the event streaming platform? It's all, it's not only about like messaging exchange, but it also has ability to provide some contextual information on top of the you know real time stream of data. We have these events, we can do something with this, but we also have a with his, with um, with mix of the historical data, we can introduce some of the contextual um, con more, more context to uh, to our applications. Now um, we have a web uh, browser. We have a web server uh, that you know writes the data to some some database and also send some of the um, some of the events to Kafka. So what you, what we have here is more or less um, legacy system, right? So we started with the traditional three tier. We have a like UI. We have some business logic. We have a, a data store layer. So with this three tier, uh, we do have something. Now we can slowly. Um, we can slowly introduce some of the new new bytes of uh, you know of the uh, of the services or, or of the technology that allows to migrate to more event driven approach. So like order service here is um, is actually uses this uh, Kafka Streams API that allows to you know do the processing and react on the events that arrive. So like the this guy order service write some of the data into local database for local storage or to also send notification that order was received. And order service is like constantly running application listens of this event. Uh, it does something in this, in this particular case. It does validation and also uh, publish event about the, um, the validation. Now, 
Once we need to talk, when we need to talk about uh, multiple services, they need, we need to talk about communication or uh, some sort of contract, how they're going to be talking to each other. So we talk about, when we talk about database, uh, database was kind of a good idea about having this contract because database has a schema and uh, you need to communicate this schema to your, um, to your uh, stakeholders because you know, when you change the schema, you'll break their application. Now, uh, we probably uh, want to have a schema here and one of the things that uh, the schema registry allows you to store centralized the version of the schema that will define the contract between uh, two services. In this particular case, it can describe the event, like uh, the event re uh, order received or relay, and the schema registry will store all this information in, inside the schema registry, and all applications can have access to it. Now, so we might have some... Uh, um, the in, in, other, in other pattern to integrate the legacy system is to use Connect. So in, in the Connect, you don't, your legacy application don't need to know anything about Kafka at all. So Connect will just constantly pull the data either from change, um, uh, change log that can listen for the changes on your database on the database transaction log, or it just use this uh, uh, GDBC connector type of thing and just do pull in batches from this database and slowly migrate this data into um, into the Kafka, for example, in this case, the uh, some stock uh, information about some socks uh, that will be published into um, in the Kafka topic. Now, next thing, the uh, the order service will be interested in the listening information of this. We should subscribe to this topic, and the consumer will deliver this message um, to um, to order service. Um, and uh, so, in this case, the we want to place some of some of the uh, some of the orders for a particular stock. There is another service part of the um, that that will have a state. So this uh, information about stocks that go in from the changes from uh, from database, this guy uh, going through here, they will be materialized in the internal representation. We will call it uh, like K table because Kafka streams it's a, as a framework. It actually have its own database. So if you want to build the services in Kafka streams, you don't need to even think about um, some, some stores because your application becomes a instance of your distributed database. Uh, we use this uh, embedded database called RocksDB to, um, to materialize it locally. Because, you know, we don't need to, uh, maybe uh, not everyone needs to access to this one, but uh, we still need to have a local persistency of this data in order to survive some of the restarts, failures, and so far so on. Now, even even within this particular boundary for the service, we can do whatever we want. We can have a like a, a, one of the favorite patterns of enterprise architects, like distributed transaction. Or it's not going to be that distributed. It still will be its own context, and you can do you know go crazy with the local service. Um, and after that, result would be populated back to Kafka, so other uh, services can uh, can consume. But we can do even better. Um, so we can use uh, the connect again on the other side things. So if something is happening with the uh, with this uh, with the stocks, we can also have this connect framework that will populate this data uh, back to the service. Now, so in this particular case, um, we kind of like turn our things um, inside out. Now we have uh, the communication between the services. We establish this through the through the events, and uh, the this is where. Our um, the comments are going through the um, through the UI, so we were actually you know requesting some of the data. Um, the some of the data will be materialized inside uh, certain services in using this local state local database called uh, RocksDB, um, and this piece, the Kafka piece, will become a um, basically centralized place of like the first level like the, it's going to be source of truth for all other services and the, uh, the information about orders in inventory and other things will be propagated through events that you know allow to have other cascades of things to for example one thing will do things publish it to kafka other services will react on it all right and the last thing i want to talk about onions a little bit but um, not specifically onions, onions, but the structure. 
how you um, how you probably like uh, peel it and find something that inside. And the base are actually like ogres or like onions they have layers, right? So when we're talking about the, the, the database, uh, we usually think about SQL, right? But six, what, what SQL is the language that allows to manipulate with data in certain format uh, that was described in the uh, relational math and that will turn into some specific domain, um, specific language called SQL that allows to operate on this one. But what if we will peel out this a layer of SQL? We will have this, um, the model where we have um, entities and relations, but essentially they will define uh, they will be defined as a some sort of like a tabular for format. Um, but the tabular format is also, as we learn uh, today, that it's not it's not something that uh, cannot be on you know peeled further. So there is a place where everything is stored. And this is the place where everything is stored is called uh, transaction log. Your database has a transaction log, which is basically a commit log. So with this service, since we start operating not from the top, from the SQL layer, but from inside out, from commit log, we start operating, our services start talking through this commit log. And the, the, the commit log is our source of truth here. And this kind of connections between uh, different layers also can be, you know, can be, can represent as the different layers of the onions or can represent different layers of the onions. We essentially, um, we're not only writing the microservices, but we also kind of turning database inside out, right? Because this, our commit log becomes our source and truth and we don't, talk to this like higher level abstraction of this database and I think it's a good thing so you don't you don't think about your data as uh, something static or something like like appealed with the layers of things you know where your data is your your uh, commit log is your source of truth I think it's a good thing and uh, this is pretty much it I think I'm, I'm done here and uh, why nobody's dancing? All right, so one last thing. Uh, we do have awesome events coming that's, uh, that we call the Kafka Summit. So the Kafka Summit is the place where we uh, bring in speakers around all things streaming uh, from the industries, from the different businesses, from open source. We have uh, our first event of 2019. It's gonna be in New York in a couple, uh, in a couple weeks. The next one is gonna be in um in london and we just opened the call for papers in san francisco if you have some interesting use case to talk with matt you need to submit because this is awesome um uh, you need to submit your talk to uh, san francisco kafka summit and uh, i hope i will see you there if you want to come uh, this is my personal code uh feel free to use it and or like send a friend thank you so much uh all this question you know where to find me you can send all this question to uh, to my twitter um, like my my pro my don't send it to the Boston Kafka. It's a different slide from different presentation. Uh, thank you so much, and uh, I'll take questions. <laughs>